G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday sort of afternoon here in Australia, the market has bounced back which is nice. So pumping during the weekends, dumping during the weeks, still seems to be alive at the moment. So up 5.1% and you know, 2.13 trillion, not too bad. We were up around 2 point, nearly 2 trillion for a while there. So we still got a little bit to go to get back up there. BTC dominance 43%, which is a right price is just under 49,000 and gas prices just continue to rise. And we have a story, excuse me, saying that we shouldn't be doing uh, any ETH transactions at the moment. And I don't know whether that has anything to do with this, but anyway, we'll have a look at the story shortly. All right, again, market up. So generally things are looking pretty good. Green almost right across the board, but there's always a couple of outliers. So the best performers are Arweave, Cello. Oh, good Lord. I mean, these are some big moves. Safe Moon, look out. It is up to number four now. So it's got a four there instead of a two. I only ever saw a three a couple of times. So it seems people are getting all over Safe Moon. You know, not for me, but you, you know, you do you. Whatever you think is right, I'm not offering you financial advice anyway. But look, some really big movers. It, it kind of feels like that was the bottom and the bottom's in. But there's no guarantees in life. And again, that is not financial advice. Bitcoin Cash, 16%. I mean, we got plenty of good double-digit movers. That's really nice. And I mean, 50% uh, in 24 hours is quite nice. No one would be upset with that. All right. What about losers, though? Has anything not done so well? What's, you know, going the opposite direction of the trend? And there's always outliers. Oh, pretty much nothing. So we've got... Uh, Leo token down 1% and then it's just the stable coins which are jumping around so that is pretty impressive that is quite a remarkable sort of bounce back people have decided that you know this trend that we've been in where we pump during the weekend and dump during the week uh, is on whether that continues which usually patterns only play out for a while and then you know everyone kind of catches on to what's going on uh, and then it will change but that doesn't mean it can't go for another couple of weeks or so because it absolutely can do that, but it just kind of won't go forever because that's the way the markets are. Eventually, you know, the drivers of the market are going to want to change things up. Again, if everyone starts to go long, then people are going to, big players are going to want to go short. When everyone's now going short, then the big players want to go long. That's how they do it. And now that we have big institutional money here, these markets aren't the same. I mean, they're never the same anyway, but they are definitely you know, play out similar to how they have played out previously. But that's all it is, similar. We really still have to wait and see what's going to happen. I mean, I didn't think we'd really get a 50% pullback. And we did because we just weren't getting them. We were getting 20, 30% pullbacks and we got a 50% pullback. Now I'm really unsure if, you know, whatever price we get to, will we ever really see more than 50% pullbacks from Bitcoin now that the big money's here? I'm sure they're going to sell, don't get me wrong, but they're only going to sell small amounts. But I don't think we're going to see 50 plus percent pull. Well, actually, I'll be careful saying that because, again, not financial advice. I didn't think it was going to happen. It depends on how high it goes. But I would say a lot of institutions, if Bitcoin gets close to 50 percent pull back from wherever it once was, they're going to be start to buying in there. And I'm not saying Bitcoin can't keep going lower. But it'll be interesting to see if Bitcoin ever has 70, 80% corrections. I'm not so sure that will ever happen again. But look, I've been wrong before. So we'll keep a look out. So again, the gains are great. The losses were basically almost none. We'll say minimal because there was uh, definitely at least one coin that had a loss there. I mean, very, very small. And that's in the total top 100 of the market cap. All right, moving over to the Bitcoin chart. So bounce perfectly. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we keep coming and bouncing off this line for a while and we've done it once, twice, three, sort of four, five, six, seven, eight, and now we have pushed up again. And it's quite possible we just kind of bounce around this area for a while. I'm not saying it's going to, and it's not impossible that this can't again roll over, come back and sort of test 42,000 before it starts to go back up. There are big players here now and they are going to do everything they can to manipulate you out of your money and yeah, out of your Bitcoin because they are happy to buy and sell. Like they, when the big players buy, and this is what you know, smart money should do, is when you get yourself a position in Bitcoin, it really doesn't matter what price you buy it at if you're investing long term, if you're trading and flipping, different story. 
but I would say probably 50% of it should be Bitcoin that you never sell no matter what. You just hold on to. And then the other maybe 50%, and I'd probably even go somewhat less than that, I'd go maybe three quarters is your long-term hold. No matter the price, you just hold on to it. And the other quarter, yeah, you can try and, you know, out-trade the market and all the rest of it. Because it's not impossible. It can be done, but it's hard. And you got to remember that when you do it, you got to pay taxes. But the big players, that's what they do. They, you know, buy up X amount of shares and they'll only sell X amount. Particularly in Bitcoin, as they see this being, the, you know, the dominant, you know, kind of thing for the next, I don't know, probably 10, 15 years until it gets to, you know, whatever price, depending on who you talk to. Some people say a million, some people say 10 million, some people say 50 million. Who knows what price it's supposed to go to in the end. But at some point, excuse me, it will level out and it'll be like gold. It'll just be a safe store of value. It'll continue to go up with fluctuations here and there but it'll generally be fairly stable. At the moment, it's still super volatile and we're yet to see what the ceiling is. So the big players and the smart money, they're going to buy their Bitcoin. They may trade with about a third of it. Some might trade more. There's you know ones out there that are more risky, but most of these big players, they're just going to buy and they are going to simply hold and they're only going to sell X amount at certain points to try and shake you out so they can get more. So again... If you're not a very good trader, uh, if you're not a tra- you know, if you're not a trader, then just hold. No one has ever lost money buying Bitcoin if they've held for a minimum of four years. If you have held for a minimum of four years, it doesn't matter what price you bought at, you are well in profit, and I mean that well in profit. If you're one of the unlucky people to buy at the peak of 2017 when it was like nineteen thousand four hundred dollars, hardly anyone bought at that price, but there were people that did. If you held to now, you've got $49,000. If you bought a whole Bitcoin, that's where we're going off. If you bought half or, you know, a quarter, whatever, then you you have to do some maths to work that out. But you are well in profit. You've more than doubled your money. More than doubled your money. And that was by buying at the peaks. Hopefully you've then learnt and now start to buy uh, at the troughs and then your gains become even bigger. So again, I'm not going to be surprised if we just keep kind of playing around Uh, bouncing around on this line for quite some time but look there's people out there saying things are getting ready to pop and it's getting ready to explode so time will tell i don't know i am just guessing and i'm just at the moment i'm feeling like yeah we're going to probably bounce around here for a while there's going to be some catalyst i don't know what it is that will then you know send it to the moon and look that could come monday morning because all the options and everything are now expired and they were saying that was kind of holding the price down and then we've got another month, so it's the last Friday of every month that the options uh, uh, expire. So we could go on a big rally for a month. And again, maybe we start pushing seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. A couple of stories I want to have a look at. So Square, they plan to build a decentralized Bitcoin exchange. That's what Jack Dorsey says. And he's the CEO uh, of Square uh, and also the CEO of Twitter. Now, the planned DEX will be open sourced and permissionless, yet allow users to fund any wallet using fiat currency. I love this. We, you know, centralized, there's times where you want things to be centralized, so you've got someone you can go and talk to. And don't get me wrong, this will still have, you know, like somewhere you can go and talk to, but decentralized where no one owns it, it's fair on everyone that, you know, kind of uses the system and things like that. I think this is going to be big. I love it. Hopefully, they have a ton of different, you know, Uh, fiat currencies that you can use to get on there i I really like jack i'd love to meet him one day and yeah sit down and have a chat with him have a beer with him you know something like that i don't know if he drinks beer or not uh but yeah very cool dude i just like everything he does uh very smart guy he does seem like he's out there for the people you know he, he cops some flack about you know twitter censorship issues but he doesn't own Twitter. He's the CEO of it. It's a business and it needs to abide by certain you know, laws, rules and regulations to keep uh, their, um, what is it? People who own the stock, shareholders happy and all the rest of it. And they want uh, forms of censorship on Twitter. Uh, it's not decentralized. And there has been talk of a decentralized version of Twitter being made, uh, both by Jack Dorsey, but also... Uh, The guy who created Ave, I can't think of his name, Kluchnikov or something like that, Uh, Alexei. Again, excuse me if I've got that uh, name wrong, but he's also spoke about doing a decentralized version of Twitter. 
I like free speech, but not when it starts uh, spouting hate and things like that. That's when I think we do need censorship when people are just saying, you know, really horrible things, you know, particularly about, you know, killing people and all kind of random stuff like that. We don't need that kind of uh, speech being allowed. You know, productive, constructive criticism, speech, absolutely all for it. You know, debating and all the rest of it. But once things start to get nasty and personal and things like that, nah, that's when it needs to be pulled. We're not having that. That's that's not free speech anymore. That's hate speech. And that is something we definitely don't want. Right, speaking about Ethereum. So, Ethereum chain split due to bugs. So, devs are urging uh, users to avoid any ETH transactions at the moment. And that might have something to do with why they're so high. So, basically, the split, uh, the chain split occurred on the Ethereum mainnet. Now, the issue has already been resolved. It's just about uh, the node operators make sure that they have updated to the new node, which literally only happened the other day. So interesting and these are some of the you know hiccups that you can expect to see from chains that still aren't fully developed could get the same thing with uh cardano you know what are, what am i talking about uh polka dot that's the one i was trying to think of you know they still haven't got their parachains going and all the rest of it i don't know any product except for bitcoin in the blockchain space that is a finished product everything else as far as i know are still you know they've got updates coming now they're always going to have some kind of updates coming but as far as i know most of them have fairly big updates you know they may not have smart track contracts going yet they don't have DeFi on there yet they don't have this they don't have that you know they're trying to sort out their transaction fees and all the rest of it so you've got to remember these are some of the risks that you take when you're avoiding and in, uh, uh, investing in cryptocurrencies outside of bitcoin it is all a big risk now it doesn't mean it's not a you know possibly good risk but still a risk you know ethereum 2.0 we're still waiting for that it all sounds really good but we're yet to see the finished product and you know i got my fingers crossed that it all works out but these are some of the things that'll come along some of it will probably fudge you out unfortunately there could be some other much larger bugs that come across before the finished product and there could be bugs that are so big that ethereum simply fails now again, that's not FUD, that's not me trying to tell you that Ethereum's going to fail. I think it's going to uh, succeed, but it is a possibility and we need to keep those things in mind. So make sure you have a plan that, you know, hopefully you're not all in ETH. I really like ETH and I've got a good position in ETH, but I'm not all in ETH. Because if ETH doesn't work out, well then I'm completely and utterly uh, going to lose a lot of money. And look, most of my altcoins are part of the ethereum network as well so i'd really be hit hard but in saying that i've got a good position in bitcoin and uh that will ho hopefully you know kind of hold me over again i don't think ethereum is going to fail i think it's going to do just fine but it could have things like this and you could get shaken out but again definitely a possibility it doesn't all work out all right nearly two billion in stable coins recently flowed into exchanges I was saying the other day that, you know, Tether started printing. It went for months without printing. And then all of a sudden it started to print. Now, when Tether starts to print, it's usually a good indication that there's a lot of money about to come into the markets. And now we had two billion worth of stable coins recently flow into exchanges. Now, again, people have wisened up to all the on-chain analytics and things that you can find out there. So it could be big, big players simply putting... Uh, stable coins onto the exchanges but not actually buying anything just getting everyone to think oh it's going to be a pump so everyone jumps in and starts to buy stuff and then they do a big dump so that's what we need to remember it's not as foreseeable as what it was in the past i'm not saying it still won't play out the way we all think it's going to play out but we just need to be careful there's a lot of big smart money here right now but even they aren't used to having all the analytics you know right there in front of people because they worked on a closed system where you couldn't see it until it had sort of happened whereas now you can see it as it's happening you know outside of people who are sitting on the stock exchanges and all the rest of it you couldn't see when their money was coming in and coming out you could only see when they made sort of purchases whereas now you can see when the money's coming onto the exchanges you can see when coins going off the exchanges it's all there in real time and it's available uh, available and accessible to everyone it is that's what we want we want that open source uh, type of blockchain you know these private bo blockchains there are going to be private blockchains governments and things like that but i don't think any banks should ever have private um, block 
blockchains. Oh, they will, though. They will. You can guarantee it. I think that should always be open. Really, you know, probably everything should be open outside of, you know, maybe spy chains and sort of things like that. But unfortunately, private blockchains, they aren't going to go any, any go away anytime soon. But we need transparency. That's what makes the system fair for everybody. Once you start having private blockchains and things like that, it suddenly becomes basically the old system where it's not fair for everyone and you can guarantee the big companies and big players will just you know take advantage uh, of the little guy because that's what they've always done. That's how they make so much money. On occasions, they're taking advantage of each other, but a lot of time, they're simply taking advantage of us. Now, also, something else that makes me bullish, so accumulation resumes after a short break the third largest Bitcoin whale has bought $24 million worth of Bitcoin. Now, again, this can still be a bit of a fake out. $24 million worth of Bitcoin is not really all that much. Like for a whale, for me and you, you know, probably never have that kind of money ever in our entire lives. But for a whale, that's a pretty small amount. And this could be, again, a bit of a fake out to get everyone super excited. Oh, yeah, they're buying, so I'm jumping in. And then all of a sudden a dump. We need to remember that these are the kind of tactics that bigger players can play, not will play. Maybe it is just a good time. They, again, probably sold up around the you know $60,000 worth and have seen that, look, this just isn't going down any further. There's too much accumulation happening. So they're like, no worries. I'm buying another $24 million. You know, probably bought in at, I don't know, $46,000, 44000 And now they're happy to write it to 100000 you know, before they start to take some profits. And that may be part of the, you know, one third or one quarter, excuse me, or maybe even a part of their 50% that they kind of trade with, jump in and out of the market. Again, the smart money, they have X amount of, you know, Bitcoin. It'll be the same with Ethereum and all the other things that they buy. They will hold on no matter what projects that they believe in. They're going to have some things that they completely sell out of, but particularly Bitcoin, you know, again, never financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. I would have 50% of your Bitcoin that's non-tradable. You just simply hold on to it for life. You don't do anything with it. You know, even 50% uh, as a trading portfolio is a lot, particularly if you don't know what you're doing with trading. I would simply buy Bitcoin and hold and learn uh, before you start trying to trade Bitcoin because the last thing you want to do is get into Bitcoin and then have traded it all away uh, and you know some bear market comes along and you just get absolutely smashed because you didn't know to sell out and get back into Bitcoin and all the rest of it. That uh, is my greatest concern for new users. And again, I've made somewhat similar mistakes. I was trading all over the place. Then the bear market came and I saw you know a little bit of money turn into not a lot of money, but you know a good amount of money. And then I saw it turn into really almost nothing. Uh, but again. I didn't sell, I just kind of left it there, forgot about it for a while, came back to it, and then was like, oh, hang on, this is going back up again. I've been lucky in that way. All right, last but not least, the gaming space. You know, NFTs have been big, but the, uh, gaming is going to be a behemoth. So blockchain role-playing game, MIR4, launches in 170 countries alongside its utility coin. Now, gamers can smelt their utility coins to take advantage of MIR4's in-game e-commerce earn-to-play. So, I don't know about you, but when I was young, like I played a lot of computer games and I remember my mum saying to me, God, that's going to rot your brain. What a waste of time. That's, you know, there's other things you should be outside playing real games with real people and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, back then, that was actually true though. So, that was fair enough. But now... Kids are going to be able to probably earn pocket money from playing games. That can literally be something that they can do to go and earn some money. Rightio, there's your game, blockchains, and make a few dollars. As opposed to, you know, parents having to come up with money and pay pocket money. And I'm don't get me wrong, I'm not saying parents shouldn't pay any pocket money. I'm not saying they should either. It's a personal choice. But now if kids are playing games, you probably can't really say, oh, you're just completely wasting your time because they may actually be, you know, doing all right and making some good coin and as we saw there's kids over in the philippines and things like that excuse me and not just kids even adults playing axie infinity and they're making a living off it this is the future this is where things are going who would have thought it was ever going to be like this you know the smart people in the know obviously probably knew this was coming but i mean i never had any idea about you know 
being able to make a living from playing games when I was young, that was just unheard of. You know, there was the odd kind of street fighter competition here and there, and, you know, you might win a shirt or something, which was all right, but no way could you make a living off playing computer games when I was young. Now, eSports is an absolute behemoth. And now, again, not only can you make a living from playing on teams and all the rest of it and winning comps, but you can make a living just by your own. You don't have to be in some big uh, group. You can simply find a game, play it, earn, and then you know do whatever you want. This space is growing so fast. I can remember when I got in back in 2017, and I thought it was growing fast then, but then we went through the 2018 bear market. And even sort of going through 2019, 2020, things had slowed down a little bit, but now it just feels like it is yeah moving so fast again this whole gaming thing the nft craze i'm very confused about you know whether we're ever going to see another bear market like we've seen before i've got no doubt we will see a bear market but i get the feeling like maybe the bear market that we've been through that kind of lasted for about six months and we got a 50 percent retracement on bitcoin and then you know 70 80 percent retracement on altcoins that may be the new bear market we may never see another prolonged, well, not never, but we may not see any, you know, year-long bear markets where, again, the whole market has gone down by, you know, these mass amounts. We could. I really don't know. And that is the part that I'm trying to work out at the moment. When do I think I want to sort of be taking some profits? How much profits do I want to take? Are we ever going to see that kind of, again, big, you know, eight seventy to ninety something percent corrections in the entire market considering big money is here now i really don't know i wish i had the answers for you whenever i come to a conclusion don't worry you'll be the first to know that is one of the things that keeps me up at night at the moment is me trying to figure out you know how i'm going to play this out because how i thought i was going to play it out is slowly changing but i got caught out like that last time in 2017 and we had a big bear market so yeah, still working on that. And like I said, I'll be, you know, you'll be the first uh, to know when I come up with uh, my solution for how to move forward. But again, mainly I'm an investor. So, you know, even if we have a big 70, 80% correction and I don't take, you know, enough profits, because I will have taken some, I've already taken some profits. It's been a very small amount. That's just the way it is. Uh, I'm quite happy with the coins that I'm in, the platforms that I've, I'm in. I believe they've got long term viability. Now time will tell. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that game train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.